doing other things, we will we'll be put in the conversation. Yeah. You know, those things, will, they will happen at some point. That's the way I look at it. So now, CJ, now, as long as you've been in the music business, what's your, uh, in your opinion, what's the pros and cons of the music business? <laughs> pros and cons of the music business, well, Again, CJ. I'm breaking up again every day. Sorry about that. Any better? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, I never had a smartphone before I went to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm still. 
still getting used to, you know, I got to hold the phone a certain way so people could hear me. I tend to put the speaker phone on nowadays because if, if nobody's around, but you know, I've got, you know, other people in the house, so I didn't want to put the speaker on, but the speaker works great, you know, especially for, uh, you know, this breaking up thing that, you know, people keep telling me about. You're not the only one, so don't worry. <laughs> So tell me, tell me, tell me this, CJ. Is there is there one embarrassing moment that that you've had with this band that you you can actually talk about that's rated PG? <laughs> embarrassing moment. Oh, I had a pretty embarrassing one in Japan, actually, but no one was there. Thankfully, I was in my own hotel room. Um, I you know I had a, a little little bit of a bathroom situation and that's probably as pg as it's gonna get <laughs> <laughs> you know but uh everything worked out for the best and uh you know i got a good night's sleep so that was fine so have you ever fallen down on stage at all no no i haven't um you know i, I you know i mean we all we all break strings we all you know, break, you know, things, things happen on stage, you know, that are heat of the moment as it were, you know, as part of your performance, you know, I, I, you know, I'll, I, I, one of my heroes growing up was Richie Blackmore, although I, he's not much of a hero to me anymore, but I learned a lot of stagecraft from him. So I'll take my guitar and start scraping it against the monitors and stuff. And, uh, you know, what I've, found is don't do it across, don't do it across the fretboard because you're going to dig your fretboard you know so now it, like when we were just in Japan, in Japan I grabbed grabbed my Strat and instead of playing a lead I started sliding my guitar across the, the PA stack and I slid it only across the pickups so that I didn't mess up my guitar <laughs> <laughs> the only it, 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 I wasn't going to get a spare at that point you know I only went with one you know so uh, you know you just got to kind of keep your keep an eye on things and make sure you don't, uh, you know, you don't break what you need for the next show, that sort of thing, you know, and, uh, gotta pick your spots, you know, you know, it, it, a lot of the live show is, is Adam, Adam Tranquilly kind of finds his spot to be, and he's there the whole time, pretty much in front of his pedal board. So it's up to Tom and Chris and myself to, to apply a little more stagecraft and, and movement. Which is fine, you know, because, you know, Adam's the rock, as it were. And, um, you know, so things are going to happen. You know, I turned, when we were in Japan, I turned and hit Chris in the face with my with my uh, headstock. And uh, I must have been a glancing blow because he barely remembered it. You know, so um, these things happen. You know, Tom and I bounce into each other. The smaller stage, the more, the more bruises. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and you know, and we're 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 a band that we play right at the edge of the stage in the, in the face of the fans. We don't we don't uh, cower from them. We're there and we're giving them a show. Mm -hmm. You know, on top of giving them music. So uh, you know, that's one thing. You know, we get up there and we just you know, you know, we get in front of the monitors as close to the barricade as we can. You know, Chris, when, when we played Peru in. 2016, Chris went down to the barricade, which was, you know, it was a huge outdoor stage, and he goes down to the barricade, and he's got super long hair, and the, he he was scared for his life because they the fans started grabbing grabbing him by the head, and he wasn't sure how he was going to be able to, you know, you know, he wasn't sure he was going to have any hair left, but somehow it worked out, you know, mm -hmm. and he didn't do that again, but. Um, you know, there's you know everybody has uh, has to keep an eye on themselves, as it were. Yeah, well, I, when I saw Blood Feast at the Ragnaracker Festival before you joined them, they got Chris was out in the crowd walking around at Reggie's all over the place out in yeah. the crowd. Yeah. So he, he still did yep, it. He did that. In, he did that in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> he did it in Japan. Oh, thinking of one other thing from uh, from Peru at the end of the set. I, I threw my guitar up in the air like you know like a Blackmore trick, right? And I don't I don't play with my glasses on. As it's leaving my hands, I'm going, oh boy, am I going to be able to see this thing come down? And sure enough, I got it. I was I was lucky. I got it. But what happened was it came down on on the instrument cord, and and it broke. So I had to do real quickly. I had to unplug 
somehow unplug the guitar and then plug out the other side of my pedal board so I at least had some sound. But I was just like, oh, this isn't going to end well <laughs> as the guitar is coming down. And, I, you know, it's something I never done before because, you know, a big outdoor stage, you got a lot of air. And uh, I gave it some air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was fun. It was fun. I know Ingve likes to do that too. Oh yeah, Ingve. He's a, he's big on you know twirling a guitar you know around his body and all that stuff. You know, and I you know I can't do that. You know, <laughs> I'm a little little too big for that. You know, I, I would think I, that takes years. Of, you know, not years of training, at least you know weeks of you know practicing to get it right. And I you know I'm not going to sit in the back of my store. And, you know, spin a guitar around my neck. Plus, it's not thrash. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> leave that. Leave that to uh, Igve and to the hair bands. You know, they yeah. do it well. Let them do it. Yeah. So, who are your top favorite guitar players of a lifetime? Uh, well, you know, I have to say, you know, Blackmore was always was my my childhood and into my later, you know, at least into my twenties, my my guitar hero. Um, but you know. I, I, he's become such a curmudgeon, you know, and such, I feel, a bad person, you know, a, 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 a not a good person, I shouldn't say, you know, that, you know, how, how he turned his back on, you know, on purple and stuff, I, you know, but he's he's up there at number one. David Gilmore, you know, I try and be the David Gilmore of metal, you know, is the way I look at it, because I don't, I do play fast. I play a lot of fast stuff, but I also play, try and play very slow and expressive, and it works really well for Blood Feast because there's all this speed still going by, and I'm they make a note, you know, for you know two measures or three measures and getting a lot of expression out of it. And it's a real good yin and yang between Adam and I. He he loves the the you know the difference between the two of us. So you know David Gilmore, Igve, uh, uh, even Halen. Uh, Alex Lifeson is a gigantic, gigantic influence. I can never, never leave him out. Robin Trower. Um, when you start getting into the metal, you know, into the thrash era, Gary Holt. You know, from day one of hearing Bonded by Blood, that guy was at the top of my list. Um, trying to think, other, you know, John Petrucci, you know, uh, Paul Gilbert. Um, I know I'm going to admit it, bro. I absolutely cannot forget Ross the Boss. Because, you know, the man is a monster. He's, he's such a godly guitar player. And I got to work for him for eight years. And, you know, it was that it, that just solidified it even more. You know, his dictator days, his man of war days, his days now as a solo artist. You know, you know, that he, you can't, you know, he's, he's amazing. You know, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much a good cross section of guitar player, <laughs> I would think. So, what was the first metal concert you ever went to? First metal concert. Concert number three. I saw Rainbow with Uriah Heep and a punk band called Tough Darts at the Capitol Theater in Passaic, New Jersey on the 2nd of June, 1978. Ronnie was still in a band. So, I, I you know, I got to see Rainbow with with Dio. Ah, you're, lu you're lucky. A, 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 you know, you know, a life-changing experience because it, it was about, I, that was what started me playing guitar. I'd already been a huge fan of Blackmore, but within a couple of weeks, I was finally taking guitar lessons. Right. And that was it. That was, that was the end of it, you know? Okay. Uh, you know, first thrash concert, probably... Probably overkill. Before they got signed, they were doing a lot of shows in the area. This is, you know, I went and saw them at a theater in Port Jervis, New Jersey, for Halloween with Tom Knowles, my my partner, and you know, my guitar player, singer, and Insaniac, and, and Skull Shifter, and uh, that was, you know, they that sold me on that band for life, you know. So, you know, overkill's overkill's always a a specter in the background. You know, <laughs> great man, such a great man. So, CJ, not to try to cut you real short, but I told I told you we only got forty five minutes to show, so we got uh, about twenty seconds left. You want to say any final words? Final words. Uh, 
to all the Blood Feast fans out there to hear this, thank you very much for supporting us from day one all the way back in E5 and certainly from when uh, I joined the band and for this last four years.